welcome. It's a pleasure and, oh. can it be a pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a pleasure and honor uh, to be here with you uh, today. Um, I've pre prepared a, a small presentation uh, which hopefully will stimulate uh, some, some thought and maybe a discussion among, among the team. It will be a, a, some kind of a, a biostimulant. <laughs> um, <coughs> so what, what will I do today? I will uh, take you on a journey of uh, introspection, of self-reflection. Uh, on how uh, we could um, uh, look for ways, explore, ex jointly explore ways uh, to make biological control live up to its role as a central tenet of IPM. <coughs> IPM, or Integrated Pest Management, has been uh, FAO's guiding compass for pest management since the 1960s. Yet, in its, uh, his its decades-long history, its core principles and, and uh, uh, concepts have been progressively uh, diluted and tweaked. And in many ways, uh, IPM has lost its way. Um, there's, an <coughs> there's an urgent need uh, to put pest management uh, back on the right track um, and holistic uh, systems approaches, introspection and interdisciplinary science are in order. Um, in this presentation, I will draw to some degree on systems thinking uh, to pinpoint uh, leverage uh, points or, or levers for en enhanced impact at scale. <coughs> so before I dive deeper into uh, the specifics of pest management and biological control, I want to quickly introduce some core principles. So first of all, as we all know, um, uh, Biological control, together with uh, biodiversity-based and agroecological preventative tactics, constitute the first line of defense in pest, in pest management. And biological control is also a desirable alternative to pesticides as a, on, on the curative uh, angle, as a, <coughs> as a curative uh, solution for pest pro problems. Secondly, uh, using system, uh, farming system stratification as an analytical lens, I uh, point out different uh, layers or different strata of a farming system uh, through which biological control can be promoted. Yeah? Biological control cannot only be promoted at the field level, but one can work at the soil level, at the seed level, at the field level, at the farm level, the landscape level and at the social level. Uh, action along each of those uh, strata or in each of those layers has to be tactically bundled and in integrated. <coughs> now, do biological control uh, scientists have what it takes? Yeah? Um, um, can we make a difference? Uh, so in this uh, graph, what I did is I looked at the all-time number of publications on biological control of uh, arthropod pests, plant diseases, and weeds for nine big groups of, uh, of nine big categories of crops. Um, and I contrast the scientific output for each of those groups of crops with the hazard loads that pesticide use uh, presents, that pesticide use in those crops uh, pre presents. Um, two big observations. So with the scientific output, especially on arthropod pest management, is substantial. And there's major, major progress um, in the biological control uh, of pests in cereal grains, in vegetables and melons, and in, ca in cash crops. Uh, sec secondly, or uh, on, so especially in, in cereal grains, uh, Biological control has immediate potential to instantaneously phase down pesticide use in, in those crops. Secondly, for pesticide intensive crops or crops where pesticide use presents a major hazard, such as uh, fruits and nuts or oilseed crops, 
there's still some, some work that needs to be done. Maybe thirdly, uh, the progress on plant disease management and weed management, though it may seem minor uh, um, as compared to, to other pest management, there is still extensive work done on these, on these systems and there are uh, readily uh, technologies uh, available. So biological control scientists, they really work 24 seven to develop and refine uh, te te technologies. However, one, one asks the question, well, do those technologies work? Yeah. <coughs> of course they do work. And here I, po I point out uh, some measures of success. On the left hand side, uh, a table developed by uh, Jörg van, van Lenderen uh, in which um, the, the, the measure, measures of success uh, are listed for augmentation biological control. And if we look at its success ratio or, or at its development costs, those measures contrast favorably uh, with the ones for, for chemical control. For example, the success ratio of one to 10 for biological control compares to one for one out of 140,000 for chemical control. Equally, the risks of resistance development for biological control are nil or small, while those, as we all know, for, for pesticides, uh, for chemical pesticides are subst substantial. On the right hand side, what I show is the benefit cost ratio for some of, of uh, some, some of the world's uh, most famous classical biological control introductions. And as you can see, I listed the one with the highest ratio on top. That's 12,700 uh, um, 12, to one. Uh, these ratios are mm, uh, 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 almost 1,300 times higher than the ones for common agricultural technologies such as improved ver varieties. Uh, so we do have something that works and we should be proud of it. Um, those technologies or the, the, the success of those technologies can and should not only be measured in terms of economics, of course. Uh, the benefits of biological control are multidimensional. They are multifaceted. And I want to emphasize the multifaceted nature of, of, of benefits drawing on a case study, a case study of this little wasp, uh, this little wasp is Epidemiocarpsus lopesi, is a parasitic wasp that in 1981 was introduced from Paraguay into Africa for the control of cassava mealybug. Um, in, 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 a, in the 1980s, it was introduced in Africa, spread or spread and released throughout the African continent and in 2010, it was also introduced into Southeast Asia. Upon its release in Africa, it averted widespread famine across Africa's cassava belt. It saved the lives of 20 million people. It reduced infant mortality by 15%. Upon it re its release in Southeast Asia in the, 2000s, in the 2010s, the, that one single species of wasp, monophagus, a specialist wasp, it raised farm revenue by 200 to 700 dollars per hectare. It eased price volatility in global commodity markets. It slowed commodity driven deforestation and it annually yields between three and 5.6 billion dollars for the Asian cassava industry. And all this was achieved with zero need for pesticides. So again, we do have technologies to offer that work and we should be promoting them far more actively. Now let's zoom out a little bit and focus on pest management <coughs> as a whole with biological control as one of its core constituents. Uh, so in this exercise, what do I do? <coughs> um, I, I draw on on a systematic literature uh, review in which I cover <coughs> pest management publications from 65 countries in the, in the global south 
over the span of a, a decade, from 2010 to 2020. And I look at what do those uh, publications cover. Overall, about half of the studies that have been published, half of 3,500 studies that have been published, they comprise field work. Field work that primarily focuses on the pest biology and the ecology. Also, there's ample attention being paid to non-chemical measures. One out of three publications in that uh, corpus of 3,500 focuses on biological control. And honestly, this is quite an achievement. Other attention is being paid to non-chemical measures such as host plant resistance, botanicals, and mating disruption. So overall, by focusing on agroecological and biodiverse preventative measures instead of chemical curative tactics, um, the, the, the overall scientific enterprise is well aligned with the IPM conceptual fr framework. However, there are some major limitations. The first limitation is that science is conducted primarily in simplified, uh, simplified experimental settings with near exclusive focus on the pest and con conducted or carried out within crop delimitations. Silo approaches really pre prevail. Entomologists work with entomologists, plant pathologists work with plant pathologists. Nobody kind of works across disciplines. <coughs> This is also evident in the graph on the right. All the research that has been conducted on Bemisia tabachi, silver leaf white fly, most of the work is focused on the plant level and at the field level. People don't look at what's happening at the farm scale, at the landscape scale, and don't look at the social layer. <coughs> Second uh, observation is that the overall attention is geared towards curative versus preventative <coughs> measures. We want to fix things instead of prevent them from happening. Um, a third observation is that 80% of studies address single factor solutions. Um, there's little or no emphasis on technology integration. Yeah, we want to promote one technology. We don't want to couple that technology with other practices such as combining breeding with biological control. Now last but not least, social layers are virtually overlooked. Honestly, we often forget that crops are grown by people and farmers, they are the ultimate gatekeepers in technology adoption. If we don't work with them, we will never be able to promote biological control or any other technology effectively. The ramifications of this are immense. Yeah? Biological control is valid, it has a lot to offer, <coughs> however, it does not, or it does not res resonate with many end users. Now, fourth, who is conducting uh, pest management science? Uh, and here, what do I do? I contrast the total research output on pest management over 2010 to 2020 uh, with uh, the, the overall development status of a, of a given country. Development status as captured by HDI, the Human Development Index. What do we see? As countries get more developed, they tend to produce more outputs on, on, on pest management science. However, there are some notable exceptions. Within the lowest bracket, for example, Benin and Nigeria are very, uh, are, are, are notable ex exceptions. Now, within those countries, which institutions conduct uh, pest management research? Globally, um, National institutions are really in the driver's seat. They, they, they are prominent actors. They are engaged in 90 to 92 percent of the publications. A second uh, most important actor, they are the foreign academia. And especially in West Africa, foreign academia contribute 62 percent of the backstopping. Um, and then thirdly, Especially in West Africa, development cooperators, development partners, they play a vital role. Um, institutions such as the CGIAR, French institutions, or the USDA, they are prominent actors on pest management as a whole. 
If we look at biological control, there are four big players in, 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 in the development partners. CABI, of course, ECP, CSIRO, and, and, and the CGIAR. The CGIAR had a lot to offer a, a couple of decennia ago. They were really a trailblazer for biological control in the 1980s and in the 1990s. However, in recent years, they've shed a lot of critical capacity and they've lost a lot of steam. However, from their short venture, short successful and intense venture into the, the realm of biological control, key lessons can be learned. And three key lessons are the following. Among the all-time technology portfolio of the, of the CGIAR in its 50 or 60 year history, Biological control offers by far the highest return on investment. It's not improved varieties, it is biological control. In Africa, 80% of documented benefits of CGIR science in all the time they've worked in Africa derived from biological control. And in the Asia Pacific, Biological control as promoted by FAO, CGIR, Australian, Japanese, and New Zealand entities every year generates on farm benefits up to $20 billion. So these are important uh, lessons to be, to be learned or to be remembered. And lastly, international networking. <clears throat> and here I, I, I uh, present two short diagrams that show uh, to what extent scientists in different countries work together in developing biological control publications. And as you can see, um, from the 1990s up till now, biological control has really become a global enterprise. Yeah? International networking and multilateral cooperations have become hallmark features of biological control. In particular, what is most notable in the rightmost graph is the strong collaboration between uh, the United States and China, a mutually beneficial collaboration all, toward, all geared towards the advancement of biological control. Other countries that really stepped forward on the, on, the, on the biological control front are Australia, are Canada, are Mexico, are Brazil, and people that are not, not people, countries that really are committed uh, to the cause and that move things forward. Now, as a take home message, we have seven, seven key, seven, seven messages to take home. So, first of all, what do we need to do? raise awareness. Many people are unaware about biological control, and I think uh, an event like today's is also very important to draw the spotlight on the discipline and on its potential. Fortify its psychological underpinnings, break down silos, really engage in interdisciplinary science and collaboration, always viewing the farming system as a whole instead as of its uh, dis di different parts, Integrate the applications of ecologically sound technologies, meaningfully relate to people involving farmers, but also social scientists, uh, not only economists, but also sociologists and anthropologists. Um, incentivize, incentivize institutional uh, reform of development partners, including the CGIAR, to harness ecosystem services such as biological control more effectively. And then last but not least, boost funding, because yeah, without funding, we cannot do much. That's it from my side.